Hey gang, in today's video, we're going to talk about what to expect on a Security Plus exam. So if my YouTube analytics are right, a lot of you guys are watching this video don't know who I am. Because according to YouTube analytics, 90% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So I'm Rob. Uh, I've been in IT for a little bit over 10 years. I have 10 certifications. I've taught over 10,000 students, a bunch of 10s. And also, I have my MBA in information technology and I've been teaching for a while. So everything that I know, I try to pour it into my students. So today we're gonna to talk about the Security Plus exam, what to expect, and then after that, we're gonna actually talk through a couple of questions, pretty much get you in the mindset of troubleshooting and analytical and critical thinking. You ready? Let's go. So once again, I would appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm starts showing me a little bit more love. So the Security Plus exam is leaning more towards people who want a career in cybersecurity. So some may say that the Security Plus is an entry level cybersecurity certification. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it's entry level because if you just fresh off the street, uh, don't know anything, never took a certification exam, Security Plus may be a little bit more um, challenging than um, you would think. So once we go through these questions, it'll kind of give you a better idea like, okay, you know, I'm pretty okay, I'm pretty good, I'll probably be okay taking Security Plus exam. But if you suck at these questions, then you probably need to take a step back and maybe uh, go back to A plus or net plus or just start somewhere else just so you don't take an L when you're actually going to take the exam. So the exam overall is a 90 minute, 90 question exam and you have to get a 750 out of 900 to pass. So some of the topics that's going to be covered on the exam are malware attacks, incident response, design, implementation, and risk management. So side note, if you've been trying to figure out if you should take the 501 or the 601 or the current version or the new version, you can look at the link in the description where I went over a full video of why I think you should take the current version. Now that's enough talking from me, let's go ahead and get straight into the test prep. Larry is a security engineer for a design studio located in Chicago. Over the last several weeks, he has been working on hardening the exchange server. He has a conversation with Lex, the network engineer, about sending encrypted and digitally signed messages. Which of the following would Lex recommend Larry uses? So gang, the secure multi-purpose internet mail extension is what you can use to actually send encrypted and digitally signed messages. So SMIME or security, secure multi-purpose internet mail extension. I keep on looking down because I want to make sure that um, I'm saying the right uh, acronym. So even though I've been doing this for a long time, that right there is something that can actually trip you up on the actual exam, right? There's gonna be a lot of acronyms on the exam, and if you don't know what the acronyms stand for, if you don't know what they are, they can literally uh, come up and slap the shit out of you inside the exam room. So you don't wanna have any surprises, right? You wanna be in there moving and shaking and doing what you need to do. But for this question, uh, S Mimi or S Mime, that would be um, the best situation the best answer for that question you've just been hired as a database administrator you want to have a myriad of methods or concepts to secure your company's database you're currently using tokenization in lieu of encryption what does tokenization actually do So hopefully you chose B, it replaces data with random strings of characters. So I'm gonna bring up this just cause it's kind of a long explanation. I just wanna make sure that you guys fully understand what I'm saying. 
So tokenization is when you replace sensitive data with data that is non-sensitive. The non-sensitive data has no value, but kind of acts as like a placeholder that maps back to the sensitive data in the tokenization system. Hopefully you're enjoying the test prep so far. Here's a word from our sponsors. Keep this train rolling. Next question. Toya is writing code for a new social media app. She wants to be proactive when it comes to preventing SQL injection attacks. Which coding technique will work best as a countermeasure to SQL injection attacks? So, SQL injection would be thwarted, would be prevented if you had input validation. So input validation ensures the quality of data, reduces the attack surface of an application, and uses validation rules to check data before being put into a system. Malik has been on his current job for 90 days. He just received 30 laptops from a distributor. He notices a red tag on one of the laptops that reads private key embedded slash full dish encryption. If this private key were matched with a public key, what would this laptop be able to provide? So hopefully you guys came up with a hardware root of trust. So hardware root of trust contains the keys used for cryptography and starts a chain of trust that ensures computers boot with legitimate code. Tanisha is a security administrator who is currently configuring a NIDS. The NIDS will detect attacks by identifying common patterns of attacks. Which of the following methods is the NIDS using? So hopefully you guys came up with signature base. So signature base needs actually goes with patterns of traffic. It sees and looks at the patterns of the network traffic. Now, once again, like I was telling you before, there's an acronym. If you don't know what these acronyms stand for, you're pretty much dead in the water. It's a rat. You might as well turn the computer off and leave out uh, <laughs> the exam room because it's not going, it's not going to go well for you. So needs, right? That stands for network intrusion, detection, system, or service. So IDS, intrusion, detection, system, or service. All right, so you would use a signature base intrusion detection service to make sure that everything was cool on um, the actual network, okay? All right, gang, so that was today's test prep. This is actually gonna be part one of a four-part series. Once again, you don't have to enroll on the course. You don't have to uh, send me any money uh, via Cash App, even though it's in the description. All you got to do is like this video and subscribe. And as always, if you're looking for IT training, you know you can head over to itmasterkey.com. Uh, we just um, broke 2,000 students, uh, 2,000 students trained on that platform. Uh, we know we got 10,000 overall, but just on that platform in two years, we've trained uh, 2,000 students. All right, gang, hopefully you enjoyed this. And other than that, I'll see you in class.